Welcome back for another video where we got another handful of polls that have been released over this past day, touching on five brand new results, two of them taking a look at the national picture of the Democratic primary, as well as two results from the all-important First Caucus State of Iowa, and some interesting new numbers out of the state of Washington. And if you'd like to look at any of these polling research resources for yourself, I have links posted down in the video description. And just quickly before jumping into the data here, be sure to click that subscribe button on the YouTube channel if you have not already, because I'm going to be tracking this race as we work our way through every single contest, updating how many pledge delegates each of these candidates are receiving and how close they're getting to the number of pledge delegates needed to win on the first ballot at the convention as well as as kind of a fun thing on the side, making predictions on who I think is going to get first, second, and third in each of these respective contests. And then after the fact, seeing what actually happened, where I went right, where I went wrong, just some fun stuff to do as we work our way through primary season. And it is just around the corner. We have Iowa coming up very quickly. But to start here, going to be taking a look at these national polls, starting with this resource from the LA Times. And some positive signs here for Joe Biden in this one. He's in a commanding first place at 30 percentage points of support. Now, throughout this entire process, we've seen a lot of national polls where Biden has had a bit of separation between himself and a lot of the other contenders. But where that has changed has been more so in the past couple of weeks, where a lot of these resources have had it extremely competitive at the top between Biden and Sanders. For instance, some very credible polling resources, such as the poll that we got yesterday out of the Wall Street Journal that had Bernie Sanders one percentage point ahead of Joe Biden. We also got a recent CNN national poll out that also had Sanders surging into a position where he was able to overtake Joe Biden. So now we're getting some of these national polls where it is showing a very close race at the top between Biden and Sanders, whereas some of them also still show Biden with a bit of a gap between himself and the Vermont. Vermont senator. There is no national primary. The closest thing that we get to it is going to be Super Tuesday, which is in the first week of March. But that's also going to be affected by how these early caucus and primary states play out through the month of February. So we can see, again, Biden leading the way here at 30 percent. He gains two points from the prior result in November. Sanders, he gains three percentage points from his prior result. And Sanders, Actually, these two national polls that we're looking at in this video, these have been resources that haven't been as bullish on the Vermont senator. And we can see that through their history of polling where Bernie Sanders was kind of in the lower double digits. In this one, he is able to get up to 16 percentage points, but still well below where he's currently at in terms of his average of the national polls. And similar in this one to where Elizabeth Warren is at at 15 percentage points. She takes a little bit of a step back there. She was at 16 in this one at 15. Then all of the other candidates find themselves in single digits. You have Bloomberg at eight percentage points along with Mayor Pete Buttigieg. And the rest of the field is in the very lower single digits beyond that. So now moving over to an investor business daily national poll. And again, this has been a polling resource that has not been very bullish on Bernie Sanders. And again, we can kind of see him in the lower double digits for a good portion of this process. But he has picked it up in the prior three results from this particular polling resource, where in December he jumped up to 18, then took a little bit of a step back there in early January, but then again, showing some more strength in this one, getting up to 19, where Biden has been very consistently kind of in the mid 20 percentage point range, grabbing 26%. In each of the past three polls, a little bit down from where he had generally been before that. Whereas Elizabeth Warren, she was showing tremendous strength in these IBD polls when she was hitting her peak specifically back in September and October. But then she takes a step back in November, a bigger step back going into December. But then she kind of had a bounce back in the last poll up to 20%. That was kind of a head scratcher because the continued trend that we've seen with the senator out of Massachusetts is she had that really strong swell of support back in the fall. And then ever since then, she has taken consistent step backs where this early January result was a little bit outside of that where she had gained six points. But in this one, again, falling way back to kind of where she was in December. In this one, she's at just 13 percentage points, which is actually the weakest she has been in any of these IBD polls. And also, I forgot to mention that LA Times USC poll that we touched on to open things up had a sample size of 2,266 respondents. This IBD poll had a much smaller sample size at just 336. Biden leading the way in this one ahead of Sanders by seven percentage points. And 
those are the clear top two options in this one with Warren taking quite a step back. And then you have Bloomberg there at eight percentage points and Pete Buttigieg at 7%. Now we have three state-specific polls, starting off here with this Iowa Democratic Caucus survey. And these are a couple of polling resources that I don't have a ton of familiarity with, where we have Park Street Strategies is this particular poll, which has a sample size of 600 likely voters. And then the next Iowa poll is from American Research Group, which is A rated resource on 538, they get rated a B, whereas Park Street Strategies does not currently have a rating. So in terms of the first choice among caucus goers, it's showing an extremely close and competitive race at the top with Biden leading by a couple of percentage points beyond Bernie Sanders within the margin of error. He's at 20%. Sanders at 18. Buttigieg and Warren, they're right neck and neck at 17 percentage points. And all the top four options, very close and competitive. And this one is showing a bit more of a competitive race at the top than what we have seen in a lot of other Iowa caucus polls, where we've actually seen Bernie Sanders take a bit of a step forward. And one thing I don't like about this particular website is they have auto scroll going through these slides. So I keep having to backtrack here. But nonetheless, Sanders right there at the top, very competitive with Biden, along with Buttigieg and Warren showing um, that they're very competitive in this one. And then also Amy Klobuchar kind of in the realm of being in that discussion right there in the upper tier where she gets into the double digits at 12 percentage points. We've seen Klobuchar showing a bit more strength in the first state of the Iowa caucuses. And she's the neighboring senator from the state of Minnesota. She has a bit more, perhaps, clout and name recognition in this particular region of the country in an area that one would expect Klobuchar would need to do well if she's going to continue on throughout primary season beyond just the Iowa caucuses. And then we have Andrea Yang at 5%, Tom Steyer at 4 Gabbard at 1 Bloomberg at 0 percentage points. Of course, he's not going to be a factor in these Iowa caucuses, and he's not really putting much of an emphasis on any of these first four early state results. So then moving over to American Research Group, again, a sample size of 400 likely voters. And this one has Sanders in the lead at 23 percentage points. And he's relatively competitive here at the top, but a little bit more of a gap between himself and the rest of the field we took a look at prior. But this one has Biden there at 17 percentage points. Klobuchar actually kind of the outlier in this one where she's able to leapfrog past Elizabeth Warren and Pete Buttigieg, where she's actually in third place at 16 percent warren right there hovering around the cutoff line at 15 percentage points we've actually seen this a lot from elizabeth warren over the iowa polls that we've been receiving in recent weeks where her numbers are just hovering right around that 15 percentage point threshold which means there's likely if this is actually going to happen going to be a lot of caucuses where warren is going to get something in the way of support but not enough to get to that 15 percentage point threshold means that It's a situation potentially where her voters could be up for grabs. This is possibly a benefit to somebody like a Bernie Sanders because whenever we see the second choice among these upper tier individuals, it tends to be Warren supporters go for Sanders by a decent margin. This also isn't a great sign for Pete Buttigieg where he's at just nine percentage points, quite a bit below than where we've typically seen him in these Iowa results. And as we get closer and closer to the Iowa caucuses, it does appear like Buttigieg has been losing steam and taking a step back where maybe kind of that centrist moderate Democratic vote has more so been coalescing a bit more behind Biden in specifically in the state of Iowa compared to where we had been for say back in the month of November when Buttigieg was showing his most strength in the area and actually had the highest average of the polls in the state going through November and December for a good chunk of time. But that is not becoming the case as we've worked our way through this past month. And then the rest of the candidates here, Andrew Yang, kind of another individual where if he's not reaching that threshold, his supporters might go over to Bernie along with Tulsi Gabbard, who's at 2%, Yang at 5%. But then, of course, you have Pete Buttigieg. If he's not reaching that 15 percentage point threshold, it would seem like his voters, they tend to be a little bit more older in nature. They would probably more so go to somebody like a Biden or perhaps a Klobuchar. And then again, if Klobuchar isn't reaching the threshold, her voters would probably either go over to somebody like a Buttigieg or a Biden if they were above that particular 15 percentage point threshold at their respective caucuses. It's going to be a fascinating dynamic working our way through this caucus. And it's kind of hard to predict these things, especially given the funky rules and how if your candidate doesn't meet that 15 percentage point threshold, how you can potentially move around. It's kind of almost like a ranked choice voting system in a way. And it's probably more complicated than it needs to be. But this is how things have been for quite a while and probably will continue to be this way going forward as Iowa uh, continues to get these 
presidential primary seasons kicked off with their caucus. And now to wrap things up, taking a look at a Survey USA poll that was taken out of the state of Washington. 536 likely voters were responding in this instance. And we can see Bernie Sanders leading the way at 26% of support, followed in second place by Joe Biden, who's at 21%, Elizabeth Warren in third at 16, and then Michael Bloomberg. In fourth at 12%, Pete Buttigieg at 8 Andrew Yang at 4 Amy Klobuchar at 3 Tom Steyer at 2 Tulsi Gabbard wasn't able to reach anything in the way of support in this particular instance. And then Undecided was there at 7 percentage points. So these are the five polls that I wanted to touch on here in today's video that have been released over this past day. And again, if you want to check out any of these resources for yourself, I'll have links posted down in the video description. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. Again, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Going to be keeping you guys up to date throughout this entire process in terms of how many pledge delegates each of these candidates are receiving as we go through state by state and how many they're accumulating in terms of getting towards that 1,990 pledge delegates that they need to win on the first ballot at the Democratic Convention. Going to be fascinating to see how this dynamic plays out in the coming weeks and over the next handful of months. And I hope you join the channel and you can come along this ride with us as we go through and see exactly how everything plays out. So again, I appreciate you stopping by. Consider subscribing and I hope to see you back here for future videos.